And South Korea's president rules out giving even one one of aid to the economically beleaguered North if it keeps developing nuclear weapons. While Pyongyang unveils new nuclear warheads and looks to expand its arsenal. And for more, we're joined by Gordon Chung. He is a North Korea expert and a political commentator. Mr. Chung, on this latest comment from South Korea's president, we've heard this before. He entered office making very clear that if you do not step up on denuclearization, you will get no more financial aid, economic aid from South Korea. Is he now repeating it, just reissuing an old threat, or is there something categorical in it? Step up or no more money? We've heard this from conservative South Korean administrations before. I believe that Yoon suk Yeol actually is serious about this because North Korea right now is going through some very serious times internally. And, and they've gotten used to uh, hard times in North Korea, but this could very well be different, a return to maybe the 1990s if things really go bad. Um, the United States has not been serious in enforcing sanctions, but if the U.S. and South Korea were, this would be very different for uh, North Korea. So you say when both the U.S. and South Korea get serious together, the suggestion is if the U.S. gets serious, that is no help if South Korea steps in and helps even if the U.S. does not do so. Why should North Korea get in line? So what's different this time is Seoul and Washington are in lockstep. Yes. I mean, the relationship between uh, the North Korea, uh, South Korea and uh, uh, the United States is actually very, very good right now. And we're seeing this at all levels of the relationship. Um, you know, President Trump tried to uh, have an accommodation with Kim Jong-un and therefore sort of let up on the gas. Um, but Biden, uh, I think, is sort of returning to a more traditional American foreign policy. He's not all the way there yet. He is, of course, distracted by Ukraine and by other matters. But we are seeing a coalescing of the relationship between Seoul and Washington. And that's a very good thing. Well, uh, North Korea is no stranger to chronic uh, food shortage. You've got more than 40 percent undernourished between 2019 and 2021. That's according to the United Nations. But this time, uh, February, that's last month, we had top officials in North Korea meeting to discuss how to change agricultural practices because even they acknowledge a serious problems with keeping their people fed. So this threat of no more economic aid, do you think that would ring uh, louder this time in Pyongyang? I think that it will because the... Uh, you know, Kim Jong-un, um, when he uh, took over from his father, promised a lot. And I think people are now starting to get tired of the promises in North Korea. And there is greater disaffection. Now, the Kim regime has been very good at squelching opposition. But nonetheless, um, I think Kim is a little bit worried about it, which is a reason why we're hearing much more of the saber rattling from his uh, regime. And, and I think that that also is another sign that things are getting worse. Now, that's not to say they'll fall apart like they did in the mid-1990s, but it is to say that it, it is heading in that direction. I think the concern is they are doing rather more than sabre-rattling, uh, not just the test in the last one, two days. If we look at the last few weeks, so they have fired their most powerful ICBMs. They've fired uh, missiles from underwater, from an underground silo and submarines as well. And now they are suggesting or rather showing that they have managed to miniaturize nuclear warheads taken together. Does this suggest we're looking at a North Korea that is very different from North Korea even just one year ago? It is different. Um, we are hearing from Kim Jong-un threats to uh, use his nukes preemptively. That is something we had not heard before. And they follow the threats by Vladimir Putin to use his most destructive weapons in Ukraine. Um, and so I think that Kim is taking his cues from Russia. And we have to be worried about the coordination of about Russia, China, North Korea, because they do seem to be acting with a lot more um, attention to detail than they did before. So this final, a very quick question here. Is China sending its new ambassador to North Korea? Does that suggest any new moves for you? 
Um, China will always support North Korea. Um, they had to send their ambassador. Um, one of the things that the United States has not done over the course of time is to actually watch the tech transfers, the military tech transfers from China to North Korea. Some of the new weapons we've seen from North Korea look suspiciously like uh, they come from China. And so, yes, that relationship is strong, will get stronger, and the United States needs to do something about it. Thanks so much for joining us. Gordon Chung, a North Korea expert and political commentator.